Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Disha Adhani and today let's study foreign trade subject, okay? This is the second lecture of foreign trade and then in first lecture we study what is the syllabus of foreign trade. From today we'll start with our unit number one, meaning and nature of foreign trade, okay? So what is meaning of foreign trade? Foreign trade in basic simple words means export and import of goods and services, okay? The transaction that happens between two countries is nothing but foreign trade, okay? Every country in the world in some way or the other relieves on their imports. Similarly, they also overproduce certain products so, they, so that they export. There is not a single country in the world that produces all the products it needs. Thus, a country produces the community which they have a comparative advantage while importing the other communities. This exchange of commodities by the country is considered as foreign trade of the country. As every country relies on their needs, their need to maintain good relations with the country they are importing from. Okay, so what is foreign trade? It is nothing but exchange or importing and exporting of goods and services from one country to another. Okay, every country has some kind of natural advantage. Every country has some kind of natural disadvantage, okay? So, in order to cancel that disadvantage and in order to get some surplus from the advantage a country has, they do import and export. They sell the excess production to outside countries and they import the production that is less or not available in the, in a, in the country, okay? Let's take example for basic import and export. Let's take the example of Dubai country, uh, Dubai city, okay? UAE country, okay? UAE country is what? It is a desert. If you see, it is nothing but a desert. There, the production of food is very, very low and the water content is also very low. So, that country depends on the food production of other countries so that they can feed their people, okay? So, this is what the deficit or this is what the disadvantage the country has. So they import the food products, okay? And why, what advantage they do have is that they have a lot of oil meals, okay? They have many, lot of natural resources they have, like, uh, like oil meals, minerals and all these things that they export to the other countries, okay? So this is nothing but foreign trade. In India, there are many things we import and many things we export. The major thing we import is oil petrol oil diesel all the th all these things we import and in exportation we export lot of spices lot of different kind of foods cloth materials and n number of things okay there is so the basically foreign trade is what uh, importing and exporting of goods and services okay now let's study some definitions of foreign trade. Foreign trade is an exchange of capital, goods and services across, across international borders or territories. So it is very simple definition given over here. What is foreign trade? It is exchange of goods, services or capital across international borders or territories. Means the trade that happens happens between countries. Okay, It is not inter-country. It is outside. It, it happens with two or more countries at a time okay according to professor j l henson say, uh, foreign trade is an exchange of various specialized commodities and services rendered among the corresponding countries is known as foreign trade okay it is exchange of various specialized commodities and services rendered among the corresponding countries means what same meaning is same it is exchange of goods and services that uh, the, in which countries are specialized in that okay india has specialization in the spices and different kinds of masalas you can say while other countries may have some uh, special kind of uh, you can say advantages like uae or uh, arab countries they have good 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 command on oil and oil reserves okay so every country has some kind of specialized commodities which they export or which on which basis their international trade becomes strong okay so let's study another meaning ahead foreign trade is in principle not different from domestic trade as the motivation and behavior of parties involved in trade does not change fundamentally depending on whether a trade is across the border or not so just like basic domestic trade that happens foreign trade is also same fundamentals of both trades are basically same they both buy or purchase things commodities or services or capital and in return they give something back okay the basic trade that happens it is the same but it is across the borders okay that is why it is given it is 
a special kind of trade okay the reason why foreign trade is so special is because it happens across the borders okay it is not just inside the country it happens across the borders okay the next is the main difference is that international trade is typically more costly than domestic trade the reason is that the border typically imposes additional costs such as tariff time cost due to border delays and costs associated with country differences such as language legal system or different culture okay and the main or highlighting difference between domestic trade means the trade that happens inside the country and foreign trade or international trade means the trade that happens between the countries is that there is costly foreign trade is more costly as compared to domestic trade okay if you are supposed to say you have to purchase uh then 10, 10 boxes of particular goods from mumbai to delhi okay so, so let's say approx cost would be 10000 rupees okay uh, this happens in domestic trade and when you go for international trade if you take same quantity same quality same type of goods and if you say import from america then that cost would i uh, roundly go to 20 25000 rupees why because there are different kinds of taxes, different kinds of tariffs imposed because of because it is international trade, because it it is happening between two countries, there is lot of taxes, there are lot of tariffs happening and charged okay and there is different cost system also the uh, the uh, the monetary sorry the monetary needs or you can say the currency value the currency value also changes okay us deals in dollars india deals in rupees okay so that difference also affects the cost of uh, import or co cost of purchasing okay so basically international trade is more expensive as compared to domestic trade and this is the most highlighting difference between both of them okay Next, foreign trade is all about imports and export. The backbone of any foreign trade between the nation is those products and services which are being traded to some other location outside the particular country's border. So in foreign trade, import and export are the basic backbone of the country. Okay, the foreign trade's uh, main basic backbone is what? That it, it imports the good and exports the good. Okay, every country has some kind of advantages that it exports every country has some disadvantages that it imports okay some nations are adept at producting certain products at the cost effective price okay so what another point it is given here some countries have some natural resources in abundance or some kind of special human powers sorry human resources that help them in cost effective production okay so what what does this exactly mean that uh, let's say I take an example of china okay why is the products of china so uh, less costly as compared to if you take a chinese thing if you take chinese lights and if you take indian lights then you see a substantial difference between the price okay china company bulbs or china company lights are very cheaper as compared to indian product why does this happen because number one thing the human resource in china is working more as compared to india means what the labor labor over there in china is way more as compared to in india number two reason why does that happen is because chinese chinese company only takes uh, orders in bundles okay in huge quantity in tons only and only when the orders are in tons they accept the order and because of the quality quantity production the cost overall cost reduces and the and this is an advantage for china okay this ad advantage for chinese company that they have a lot of human resource which works as laborers and they take compulsory orders in uh, huge quantities so that the cost of production redu reduces okay if you see the people working in china who work as laborers you will find that uh, find the production you will find the process very Oh, you can say not happy okay there are not many labor laws over there as compared to in india india there is indian indian government has given maximum protection to labor for from exploitation okay in china there are not same so much rules for labors okay so that affects the qualitative output or the quantitative output from the labors okay so this is something another reason another difference that some nations have some certain benefits okay because of which they can cost produce effectively okay 
Eh, so let's say another example. Another example would be of India. Okay, India in India there are many IT companies or there are many call centers. Okay, nowadays the call centers are shifting to uh, Africa, but before five ten years there were many many call centers in India. Why? Because India's production of IT people, India's production of engineers is at large level. Okay, yeah, every year there are ten lakh students coming out of as uh, graduates of engineering. Okay. So this is the effect uh, you can say advantage of our country that we have many engineers. Okay, so because of that we can uh, excel in IT services. We can give services of IT in lower cost, and we can con uh, we can import uh, we can export the services of IT sector. Okay, next is. Perhaps it is because they have labor supply or abundant natural resources which make up a raw material needed. No matter what the reason, the ability of some nations to produce what other nations want is what makes the foreign trade work. Okay, so it is explained ahead. It is ahead here only. What it says is that because of some kind of advantage, maybe abundant natural resources or labor supply. The quantitative output is very good. The it uh, the production cost is very less, and that is why the country excels in selling in the exportation of those particular goods or services. And that is what that is what makes the foreign trade work. Okay, some kind of advantage having some kind of advantage is the reason why foreign trade works. Now let's see nature of foreign trade. First, separation of buyers and producers. And in inland trade products producers and buyers are from the same country but in foreign trade they belong to different countries okay some basic different nature is given over here number 1 is separation of buyers and sellers or producers so what is given over here that seller is from another country and buyer is from another country this is a basic fundamental this is a basic nature of foreign trade foreign trade happens between two countries so obviously there is different countries person buyer and different countries persons as a seller or producer okay next foreign currency foreign currency foreign trade involves payments in foreign currency different foreign currencies are involved while trading with other countries okay so in this we are dealing with different kind of currencies yeah it is not just one kind of currency okay we are different dealing with different currencies example if you are importing from usa you pay them in dollars rather than in rupees if someone is if we are exporting from india we are taking money in rupees rather than dollars or euros or yen and all these things okay so foreign currency is another highlighting nature of foreign trade okay next is restrictions imports and exports involve a number of restrictions but by, by different countries okay normally import faces many import duties and restrictions imposed by importing countries similarly the various rules and regulations Hard to be followed while sending goods outside the country. So there are many restrictions. There is no free trade happening in foreign trade. Okay, you can't just easily sell goods and you can't just easily buy goods from foreign countries. Okay, why does it is happen? Because government or the nation wants maximum advantage of foreign trade. So it imposes many taxes while importing. They say why to import from other country when we are producing it ourselves. Okay, so that is one of the main reason why there is more more taxes. Another more main reason is because our currency is going there. Our money is going in other country, and they that may prove as a you can say uh, the the negative point for our country. Okay, so there that is a reason why there are many restrictions and many taxes and many import duties. For importing, or uh, importing, and similarly while exporting, there are many rules and regulations to be followed. There are many steps, legal steps to be followed while exporting of the country. Okay, so uh, exporting outside the country, so there are many restrictions in import and export. Need for middlemen. The rules and regulations and producers involved in the foreign trade are so complicated that there is a need to take help of middlemen. They render the service for smooth conduct of trade. Okay, so need of middlemen. Need of middlemen means what? Need of an agent. Need of a uh, commissioner. Comm sorry, commission. Commission agent. All all these people are required. Why? Because foreign trade working is very critical in nature. It has many rules and regulations that to be followed. For importing or exporting, there are many paperwork that is need to be done. So. 
it is not easily understood by a common person or a person who is more interested in production rather than purchasing of products so the need of middleman is there when you have a middleman when you have an agent or commissioning agent commission agent what they do they do all the paperwork that is necessary and uh, they give a smooth flow to the importing and exporting of the goods okay next is risk element risk involved in foreign trade is much higher since the goods are taken to long distance and even cross the oceans okay the risk element over in foreign trade is very much high why is it very much high because goods are traveling globally okay you are buying importing some goods from america to india suppose then what are the when I mean, there are many kind of risk that if that is coming from airways or through airplanes there is very high risk of the airplane getting crashed or some kind of illegal translate transactions happen happening with your goods and services even though you don't want to do illegal work but there are middlemen middle people or there are some kind of people that do illegal work with your with your work next next risk element is that it may not pass the different duty different rules and regulations of other countries okay in many countries there are many things that are banned from importing or exporting so if you want to import and export that kind of particular good it may be banned so the risk elements in export and import is higher as compared to domestic import and uh, domestic trade okay next is law of comparative cost a country will specialize in the production of those goods in which it has cost advantage such goods are exported to other countries on the other hand it will import those goods which have cost this advantage or it has no specific advantage okay law of comparative cost means what when you say word comparative cost comparative means what comparison and cost means what total production of cost okay so what is law of comparative cost in simple terms it means that in which products the you have advantage in which products the cost of production is very low as compared to other countries you sell, export that product and which product has a large number of uh, expenditure you import that product or you have kind of disadvantage from that product you better you import that product this is nothing but law of comparative cost as we go ahead we'll understand this in detail in next chapter we'll study in detail what is law of comparative cost but in simple terms law of comparative cost means selling those products in which you have cost advantage and buying those products in which you have cost disadvantage okay so next is government control in every country government controls the foreign trade and gives permission for imports and export may influence the decisions about the countries with which trade is also taken government control means what government has a control over foreign trade if government would decide this products will be not be imported anymore that will be not imported anymore even even if that is a raw material for your business okay so this according to government your trade happens it is not completely in your hands if the government restricts it you can't do that trade okay if the 